Hello, my friends. Hello, and welcome once again to Stately Vaughn Manor, where today I'm going to be talking about a series of books that, when I was a kid, was everywhere. And if you grew up in the United States and you're about my age, which 50-something, you know, well, then you probably saw this set of books everywhere, too, because it seemed like, you know, back in the 70s and the early 80s, everybody was reading this set of books. And the series I'm talking about is this one. This is the Kent Family Chronicles. It actually started off, I think, as the Bicentennial series, and then it became the Kent Chronicles, as it is on this volume. And then it became the Kent Family Chronicles. This, this series of books was written by John Jakes, the historical novelist who became very popular for writing this set of books. And he's probably even better known actually nowadays for writing the North and South trilogy, which was a trilogy of three gigantic books. One of them is especially gigantic and the trade paperback is like, it's huge. And that series about the Civil War, the American Civil War, enormously popular. So he did all right for himself, John Jakes. But why on earth am I talking about this series of books that I haven't read yet? There's a reason. Earlier this month, I did a video talking about a lot of the books that I'm going to be reading for my 500 book challenge, which is the challenge for me to read 500 books I already own before I buy any new ones. And so I was going through some boxes and some other things, checking out a bunch of the books I'm going to be reading. And in one of the boxes was this series of books, The Kent Family Chronicles. And I said, you know, hey, I got to read that set of books. So I was already planning on reading this set of books. But a few days after I put that video up, John Jakes, the author of this series, passed away. He was 90 years old. He passed away on the 11th of this month, I think. And I don't know what it is. When an author passes away, there's something about that event that makes a person want to check out his stuff in a more urgent way for some reason. Like I was already planning on reading this. I already had my, my mind set on reading this series of books. But now John Jakes is no more. He is gone. And something about that made me think about John Jakes, the author, and what he has left behind. You know, he started off as a pulp writer. And he used to write science fiction stories and a bunch of other different kinds of stories for the pulp magazines. Then he went on to write paperback originals. He wrote under some different pseudonyms. My favorite thing that he did is probably Brack the Barbarian. And of course, at this point in my mind, this is his crowning achievement, Brack. I mean, of course it is. But not everybody thinks Brack is the best, but, you know. He did write a series of books about Brack and a bunch of other stuff besides. He actually plotted an issue of Conan the Barbarian for uh, Roy Thomas for the original Conan the Barbarian comic book series. And John Jakes, even though I haven't read most of his stuff, he is kind of a writer I feel like I can relate to in a way in that he seemed to enjoy a lot of the things that I do. John Jakes was a big Robert E. Howard fan. He was a big fan of sword and sorcery, heroic fantasy, that kind of thing. He really liked that kind of stuff. And so, of course, you know, he wrote Brack the Barbarian just because he loved that stuff. And he wrote that a uh, bit of uh, that issue of, or he plotted that issue of Conan the Barbarian, and he uh, he was sent the artwork, the splash page, the opening splash page to that issue, which was 
was a curse of the spider god. I can't remember off the top of my head. And he hung that, he hung, hung that original artwork up by Barry Windsor Smith. And he had that artwork up since the 70s. He still had it up at the time of his death, probably. He certainly did in 2018 uh, because Roy Thomas mentions it in the first Conan Omnibus. So he was a fan of a lot of the stuff that I like. And at one point he was quoted as saying that I love melodrama. He loves melodrama. And I actually have a very high tolerance for melodrama as well, probably because I've read so many comic books and pulp magazines. So he's the kind of writer I can sort of relate to in the, as far as the things that he enjoys. And he's, he wrote a whole bunch of different things. But he really struck gold when The Bastard came out. The Bastard, the first in the Kent Family Chronicles. And like I said, I remember these being everywhere. They were trade, they were not trade, they were uh, mass market paperbacks that were everywhere. And then these book club hardcovers were released. Then it was made into a TV mini series that was all popular. And then The Bastard came out again in a new, with a new cover on it. It was a big deal. And this is the kind of historical novel and the series is, it's, it's the type of historical novel where you have characters that he invented, the Kents. And these characters that he invented would very often interact with characters that were based on real life people. It was that kind of series. And people loved it, man. People loved it. So I'm, I'm frankly surprised I haven't read it. It's something that I've always intended on reading. And for some reason, like I said, now that John Jakes has passed away so recently, makes me want to pick these books up soon. So I'm probably going to be reading The Bastard next month, and I'll just probably go on from there, reading them as often as I can. It'll be interesting to read this. Right now, I'm reading a very different historical novel, uh, Wolf Hall by Hilary Mantel, and that is, a, it's a really good book. It's, it has some complexities to it. It's written in an interesting style, and it's, it has moments of just pure beauty, and just, it's, it's a high quality piece of work. It's high class, will fall. This is, more on the pulpy side of historical fiction, which will be a refreshing change, I think. It'll, it'll be interesting to read this after reading Wolf Hall. And The Bastard will be the first one, which takes place before the revolution. I've always been interested in reading this series because of the great covers, because it seems like a fun series of historical novels. I am, on my mother's side, a Kent. So, you know, it's family here. My, my full name is Michael Kent Vaughn. So I really should read this series, starting with The Bastard. And like I said, when the paperback came out, they changed the cover on this. But this one uh, starts off before the revolution, the American Revolution. And so that's the first book. And then The Rebels came out. The Rebels. And this continues that story and into the revolution, I believe. Then we go to The Seekers. The Seekers. Now you'll notice there's a theme in these covers, you know, where you have the, the He-Man hero and you have the passion the passion because you know the passion is like a big deal on the dust jackets you have epic adventure soaring romance it soars and unrelenting passion the passion never stops it's unrelenting who wouldn't want to read this book so yeah and goes on we have the furies we have a female, Kent, 
on the cover on this one. And yeah, which doesn't tell, this doesn't tell me when this takes place. Probably the 1850s, I'm guessing. We'll see. But then we get into the Civil War. This is the first time he tackled the Civil War. Now this, you can tell, has been hanging out for a long time. Look how faded that is on the back. This has been on, this was on somebody's shelf, probably in direct sunlight, probably for decades by the time I picked up this set. But that's awesome. So we got the Civil War there with uh, the Titans. That's the Titans. And uh, we move on to the sixth book, The Warriors. We're still in the 1860s, I think, with the, with the Warriors. Got the Warriors going on there, you know unrelenting passion it's still unrelenting then we move on to volume seven which i think has got to be the 1870s yeah the year is 1876 the united states is a hundred years old so we've gone through a hundred years of the kent family by volume seven now originally originally john jakes had planned for this series to go right up until 1976, which was when he began the series. But that didn't happen. I believe what happened, if I'm remembering correctly, is that he actually, after the next book in the series, or right before it came out, he was commissioned to do the North and South trilogy. And so he moved on from the Kent Family Chronicles to that. And so this book, the Americans, the Americans, which takes place in the 1890s, takes place in the 1890s. So the Americans ended up being the last book in the series, which it wasn't intended to be, but that's how it ended up. And uh, I think there's, is, it, is there an afterword to this? Yeah, he, he wrote an afterword where, where he talked about it. And he said, you know what? Maybe someday I'll get back. Maybe someday I'll get back to these, to this family and write some more. But he never did. He, he moved on and he did some other things. But he had some interesting ideas. And there's this paragraph, which I really like. In 1976, one youngster sent me a letter containing this idea. In the 1920s, a metal cylinder carrying a super powerful infant from another planet is discovered in a field by a kindly father, by kindly farmer named Kent, who is shown to be Philip's descendant. So the farmer and his wife adopt the child, christen him Clark, and the rest is delightful speculation. I do kind of wish he had written that book. So according to John Jakes, in a way, we can look at these Kents as, as being the ancestors to Clark Kent's adoptive parents. That's kind of interesting. And I really look forward to reading this series of books and reporting on them to you. Unfortunately, I can't read his gigantic North and South series afterwards because I don't have that set of books. But rest assured, after I read another 460 something books, I will buy that series and read it, I'm pretty sure. Anyway, that's all I have to say today about the Kent Family Chronicles. Really looking forward to reading this series of books. It's kind of like part, it's like a little part of American history, actually, the, these books, because man, these were popular. Like I said, I remember when I was young, going through the checkout lines at the supermarkets and things, and you would see these paper paperbacks just on those metal racks they used to have, you know, for books. Oh, those were the days. Okay, guys, I'll shut up now. I will catch you next time.